The concerned all progressives, Congress youth stakeholders in Choir State threatened to disrupt the forthcoming party membership registration exercise if what it called the illegal removal of Honorable Bashir Omol Laja or Balarinwa uh, as chairman of the caretaker committee of the party was not reversed with immediate effect. The APC youth also called on the national caretaker committee of the party led by Governor Mai Mala Buni of Yobe State to overturn the decision in the interest of the party in the state. Now, Bolarinwa was removed from office by the National Caretaker Committee and replaced by his deputy, Alhaji Samari Abdullahi. Now, joining us to have this conversation uh, is Oladi Meji Mustafa. He is the legal advisor for APC in Kwara State. Mr. Dimeji, it's good to have you join us. Hello, are you, are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for joining you us. Can... Yeah, you are welcome. And of course, uh, we have live in the studio with us, Biodun Shomi. He is a political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Shomi. I'm pleased to be here. All right. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Demeji. What exactly uh, is the reason for the youth in your party um, referring to the removal of Mr. Bolarinwa as illegal? You said what? You said... The youth, in, the youth in your party have said that the removal of Bolarinwa and being replaced by another person is illegal. Well, you say his, his removal is illegal. To me, I don't think anybody remove him, and he cannot be removed. Hello? I'm, so, I'm so sorry, but they have said that he's being removed and he's being replaced. But you're saying but, that he's not been removed and nobody can remove him. So you're obviously supporting uh, the youth in your party. Why do you I, I, think that this I, is a, an I, issue as we speak? As, as you must have known that I've, I told you earlier on that I'm the state legal advisor of the APC. Yes. And we are uh, uh, state ESCO of Kwara APC, Bashir Omala Jabolani, were honorable. Is it the state chairman, Chartica Committee, and the highest ruling body of APC in Kwara State, APC? Okay. Okay. And at the same time, we have NEC, National Executive Committee, headed by Governor Buni, Memala Buni. And if there will be anything of such, there will be a communication to the state executive committee of the party, headed by Omalaja Bashir Balaniwa. And up to now, there is no any communication from the national level of the party. But the information that we have is that the National Working Committee, um, the removal of Bolarinwa was at the behest of the National Working Committee. But you're giving us a totally different perspective. Can we say that there is a crack in the party and that is why there's this different information from Block A and of, Block B? Of course, of course, there's a division in the party. And there is a division which does not ne necessary. The division was caused or is caused by the executive governor of Kwara State, Madam Abraham Abrazak, right from the time he, he has emerged as candidate before the general election. He has caused division in the APC. And this is a man, Honorable Bashir Bolaran Raja, who took the party from the scratch after the exit of the former senior president of Nigeria, Dr. Bukola Saraki, from the party. Then Bashir Bolarinwa took off the party as the state chairman unanimously. All tendency that formed the APC agree unanimously that Bashir Bolarinwa should be the state chairman of the party. And since then, he stood up to make sure the party have 100% victory in the last general election, 2019. Then immediately after the emergency of Malam Abraham Abrazak as a candidate, he has been giving the party problem, saying that he cannot work with our state chairman. I, I, I have a, 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 another question. Who exactly is steering the will of the party? Because I'm interested to know if this who is, it, who, who, who is doing what? I want to know who's steering the will of the party. In other words, who is, in, who is the party leader in your state? Is it the governor? Is it um, um, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Saksaraki? Is it the Minister for Information? Who exactly is leading the party? Because 
Kara State does have three, two ministers uh, uh, in uh, the APC, uh, and of course you have the governor. Who uh, is in charge of the party? Ordinarily, ordinarily and constitutionally, the leader of the party is the state chairman of the party. But conventionally, conventionally, which is not in the constitution, the, the governor is the leader of the party in the state. And does that, does that give the governor the powers to decide who becomes the state party chairman? Or yes, is, yes. That, is that the decision of the people in the party? There is, there is, no, there is no rule. The party that has constitution, and there is no rule or law in the constitution that, that gave the governor any power to remove or unilaterally nominate anybody as the chairman or any officer of the party. Okay. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't have the power. I mean the governor, he doesn't have the power. Interesting. I'll come back to you. Um, let me come to you, um, Mr. Shomi. This is what we see time and time again in political parties, be it APC or PDP, where there, is, there seems to be a crack in the party because there are too many godfathers uh, within one party and everybody seems to be struggling for some, you know, big chunk of power. How do we see this power tussle, you know, um, play out? Because like I said earlier on, we have a Saraki in the APC who's also a minister. We have the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, and we have the governor of the state. We also have Mena Buni sitting at the helm of affairs of the party, and people have referred to him as high-handed. How does this play out for the APC inquiry state? Yeah, what you see is that the crisis in APC started immediately after the elections, uh, which was won by the governor, the sitting governor. Um, it was over appointments mm -hmm. of commissioners and special advisors. Um, there were disagreements um, between two power blocks before um, uh, the, the, uh, Mrs. Saraki you know, emerged. You know, as a minister, there were divisions. <clears throat> um, you have the actual minister, um, uh, Alaji Lai Mohammed, Mohammed. Mm -hmm. you know, who felt that, look, he needed to be respected, he needed some um, influence within the cabinet and some post. And you also have the governor who was, and who is still determined to be himself, you know, said, look, I will not tolerate the emergence of any godfather or anybody dictating to him. The fact of the matter is, if you go into history and you see how um, the governor emerged, you will realize that uh, the whole party rallied around him, um, you know, for him to emerge. So many people have thought that there will be a kind of consensus on the issue of um, appointments, mm -hmm. you know, to appease or to compensate different um, political groupings within the APC in Kwara State who fought to remove, you know, the former governor. Um, but from all indications, the governor seems to be determined, you know, to assert um, his domination over the political affairs of Kwara State. On another score, when you actually look at what is going on, I disagree with the legal advisor, you know, on his perspective that the governor does not have the power. Hmm. What he's not addressing is that the governor has the capacity if he lacks the power. Well, I think he's talking Tacitly. about legally and constitutionally as correct. per the party's correct. constitution. I'm guessing that's correct. where he's coming from. That's correct. But we should not forget one thing, um, because I'm not, I don't have a horse on any of the uh, things. Now, if you, we should not forget one thing. This is not an elected executive in power. This is a caretaker committee put in place. And um, from all indications, it was not the governor that removed the chairman. It was the National Working Committee of APC. Yes, it may be true that they have not communicated or there's a gap in communication or delay in communication between the National Working Committee and um, the state chapter. But I doubt if that would have happened without uh, the governor being behind that. So he has the capacity. He may not have the legal powers you know, to dissolve uh, or to remove the chairman, but he has the capacity to influence that direction. So I think the legal advisor is purely looking at a political issue from a legal viewpoint rather than looking at it from a political viewpoint. Uh, 
Mr. Demedi, have you received a, a letter, a formal information telling you as a party, uh, as a bloc, that your chairman was going to be relieved of his duties? Was there any communication from the National Working Committee? Uh, 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 up to now, there is nothing of such. Up to now, I'm telling you. Hmm? I just came from Abuja yesterday in the evening, and there is no any communication whatsoever as to relieve of his position. So, but, that, but you said there might be a delay and... Yeah, and it's quite unfortunate because such an announcement shouldn't have been made without communicating with important stakeholders like the legal advisor of APC in Kwara State or the person involved, the chairman or the removed chairman, whichever way mm. you want to call it. Um, that should have preceded any announcement. But if... What Mr. Mustafa is saying, or Alaji Mustafa, I don't know his, um, whatever, if, if what he's saying is true, I don't think that is right. I think, again, this is one thing we should stop doing in this country. You remove people and they only know through the radio or through the media, rather than communicating, treating people point, decently. Point, point of correction, yeah. point of correction. He yes. has not been removed by, at any quarter or by any executive or by anybody. Uh, it's just a purported removal purported. by this yeah. uh, state government. Mr. Mr. Ladimaji, you keep making reference to the fact that he's not been removed, but you, the youth in your state have given a 24-hour ultimatum. They are speaking. So if he was not removed or purportedly not removed, how come what? the young people in your state are giving the National Working Committee a 24-hour ultimatum? How come they're asking the president to intervene if there is no such thing, or maybe you're trying to say to yourself and to your people that it's not happening, even though it has happened. Hello? Anybody is free to say anything. We have freedom of expression, our freedom of press. So anybody can go to press and say whatever he likes. But what, we are, what I'm trying to tell you is that we have national executive body, theatrical, national theatrical committee, who have the right to do otherwise about any party throughout in Nigeria. It was this National Theatrical Committee that sworn in all the 36 state chairmen, mm -hmm. uh, which include our own chairman here in Kuala State. So I don't know if there will be any removal, the communication will be from the national headquarters and not anywhere else. What do you think would happen to the party after now? Because of obviously, you're pointing fingers at your governor. You're saying that this probably is coming from him. But then... This, this, this attempt is not his first attempt. He has attempted so, so many times to get him removed. And the last one was at Kwara Hotel. When he organized, I mean the governor, he organized a fake party not knowing that they, they are planning a, a failed coup to remove our, our chairman. Okay. It has been failing. I will still fail this time around. Okay. We will still fail this time around. All right. Quickly, Mr. Shewami, before we wrap things up, going forward for the APC, and again, I'd like to make reference to the fact that the APC seems to be having these kind of similar issues everywhere. I mean, let's not forget what happened in Edo State very you know, quickly. It's the same power tussle that, you know, put a crack in the party. And parties are somewhat, you know, um, coming together and pulling their forces, you know, getting ready for 2023. Does this in any way show that the, maybe the APC is not ready for uh, what's coming in 2023? No, I, I don't think so. I just think that the APC has failed to manage the crisis. Even PDP have their own crisis okay. in each state. They all have their problems. But in the case of Kwara State, unfortunately, uh, is getting more pronounced. The seemingly crisis, which people thought, you know, they would resolve it one way or the other, has not been resolved. Mm. And what you see is that there is a danger if um, efforts are not made to resolve this. There is a danger that it could also um, threaten the hold of the party you know, in power. Because okay. when you have this kind of crisis going on, it's going to demoralize the members. You can see how Mr. Mustafa has been expressing his views very strongly, yes, from a legal viewpoint, 
and then also you have the political issues. If this issue ends up in court, what we end up realizing is paralyzing the party. And the okay. party is central, is the vanguard to mobilize members for elections. Well, Piotr Shewumi is a political analyst and, of course, joining us from Kwara is uh, Oladi Meji Mostafa. He is the legal advisor for Kwara State APC. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. All right. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, before we come back, of course, Nigerians are going to tell you what they feel about the Buhari administration, how they feel about it, what they think it's done for them. And of course, when I come back, I'll give you my take. So far, so good. Buhari administration has not been fair to the masses. I'm talking about the lower class in the sense that those of us who are below the average earner, um, there's a lot of um, poverty in the land, uh, no job. Uh, the, 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 the country is, is disorganized. We don't know the way forward. For me, oh, the administration is not good. It's not fair for the poor people. We, the masses, we are suffering. That is what I have to say for now. This is not what I expect from the Bari regime, to be sincere. The thought I, what I thought that, because even my wife, I told her within one year, by God's grace, you see Nigeria will be settled. That is the first thing. But this, we are going to four years now, how many years now we are, we are into. Things, things are not, they are just, maybe bad, I don't know. Some people are saying that they, they charm me, they do, do, do. All is a lie, you understand? Buhari, let Buhari focus on his regime and uh, go through what masses are going through. It has not been fair at all to every one of us. And people have been complaining here and there. We will tell you, say, the Buhari government, the time we're in the room, is not good. Uh, you see, Buhari government so far, well, it's doing well, but I just believe it's uh, people around him that is working, not even him at all. Sure, you understand. But it's not so, it, I mean, the whole thing is that it's not, it's not favoring at all. Well, here's my take. Mr. President, so much is happening under your watch, yet so little is seen and heard from you. We're being kidnapped, we're being killed, we're being shot at, yet we get no justice. We still haven't gotten over October 20th, 2020. We spoke up against bad governance and police brutality, but we were all shut down. The beauty of democracy, Mr. President, is being allowed to speak up and make demands of our government, especially when it seems that we aren't getting what we were promised. All we ask, Mr. President, Mr. Governor, Mr. Politician, is good leadership. All we ask for is good governance. All we need is a better Nigeria. This we desire. I am Mary Anakul, and thanking you all for watching Plus Politics. Don't forget, you can follow us on our social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, and of course on Facebook. And you can watch uh, this show live on YouTube. Have a beautiful weekend. Good night.